All right, so in this video, um, we're going to talk a little bit about margarine and butter. So we're going to transition into food a little bit. And this has, the reason we're talking about this is because it does have a lot to do with saturated and unsaturated um, fatty acids, which as you recall, we talked about saturated alkanes in chapter 10, and we talked about unsaturated alkanes in chapter 11. So even though we haven't talked about fatty acids yet, and we'll get to that in chapter 15, um, we're going to kind of use this as a little bit of a kind of a, an example, if you will, to uh, put this idea of alkanes and alkenes and saturated and unsaturated molecules into some real world examples. Um, so butter is made up of saturated fats. Uh, it's a solid at room temperature. And what we mean by um, butter being a saturated fat is that if you look at this part of the fat molecule that's in butter, you'll notice it looks a lot like an alkane. Now, the only difference is this part over here, and we'll talk about that whenever we get to fatty acids and how basically fatty acids are carboxylic acids and so on and so forth. So don't worry about that right now. Just focus on the fact that this part that is circled is going to be saturated. In other words, there's no double bonds. There's as many hydrogens as we can get in there, okay? So it's considered to be unhealthy if you have a diet that's rich in those types of saturated fats. Um, so the alternative to that is to make a synthetic product that behaves similar to butter, but it's not really butter. So margarine is that synthetic product that is prepared from vegetable oils, which are those oils are unsaturated fats. So let's talk about kind of how that works a little bit. So unsaturated fats are going to be liquids at room temperature. But if you're having a piece of toast or something, you don't want to just pour some uh, liquid on it usually. Um, most people prefer to like spread a butter. So to make that margarine, which is kind of derived from oil into a solid at room temperature, what we can do is we can partially hydrogenate um, that vegetable oil. So if you've ever read a product label that says partially hydrogenated vegetable oil or anything like that, um, that's exactly what it is we're talking about here. So partially hydrogenated vegetable oil is, or partially hydrogenated soybean, soybean oil, sometimes you'll see, um, that's where you take a liquid and you perform a chemical reaction to do a hydrogenation reaction. And on the previous uh, video where we talked about addition reactions. This type of hydrogenation reaction is a type of addition reaction um, that basically takes a double bond and you break it and you add two new bonds. Well, if you do a hydrogenation reaction, you're going to be converting the alkene to an alkane, and that's going to basically take the double bonds, convert them into single bonds. The more single bonds you have, the more solid it is, right? Unsaturated um, fats are going to be liquid, saturated fats are going to be solid. So the more saturated you make it, the more solid it's going to be. So by doing this partial hydrogenation, you end up with um, only having a few double bonds left. So we don't completely hydrogenate it. So we still leave a couple of those double bonds in there. Um, but most of them get converted into single bonds. And in the end, we end up with... Um, this partially hydrogenated oil. All right, so to put it all in picture form, what you can see here is we have the unsaturated vegetable oil, oils up top. So, right, these ones are the unsaturated ones up here. And you can see that they have the double bonds, right? So they have double bonds between their carbon. And what it does are these double bonds create kinks in the chain. So instead of it being like a long, straight chain, which you would expect to see if it was like an alkane without the double bonds. Um, these kinks in the chain make it so they can't pack as close together. So because of that, you get um, the lower melting temperatures and you get them to be liquids at room temperature. All right, so now by doing the partial hydrogenation, and you can see that hydrogenation that has occurred here, um, converting that double bond where it was just a CH double, bond, double bonded to another CH, now you have a CH2 and another CH2. So really, you're taking this part to make it look just like the rest of those CH2s up there, which make, allows them to pack um, more closely together. 
um, gives it a higher melting temperature, which is why you get this stuff here that looks more like butter instead of a liquid. All right, so that's kind of the overall result of this partial uh, hydrogenation. So the bad part to this is that, um, at least health-wise, is that some of this partial hydrogenation leaves trans double bonds on the fatty acid chains. So the idea here is that whenever we make a double bond, I'm going to go back, um, whenever we have these double bonds in oils, the reason that um, they have that lower melting temperature and they're a little bit better for you than the saturated fats are because these double bonds, looking at this one again, um, it's because it's a cis double bond, right? So remember, like, if you're looking at the double bond itself, down and down, the carbons are on the same side of each other, so the same side as cis, so that's a cis double bond. Um, and those are important for to have the correct properties of this unsaturated oil. So if you do a partial hydrogenation and you um, sometimes what you have happen is those cis double bonds get converted to trans double bonds. Well, trans double bonds are very similar to saturated fats in terms of their shape. And because of that, your body metabolizes them pretty much the same way you would saturated fats. So because of that, they're just as unhealthy as saturated fats. So the idea here, if you were to talk to a nutritionist, they would tell you to get rid of saturated fats and trans fats because they're both very similar. So why are trans fats and saturated fats very similar? Well, this slide here kind of shows it. If you're just looking at it without um, reading the slide, right? So the keyword here says this is a trans double bond and this one's saturated. But they both just zigzag all over the place, right? They're both going up and down and up and down and up and down kind of back and forth like this, right? The idea is if you have, and that would be a trans double bond. Well, if you were to have a cis double bond, it kind of looks like that. Um, and that cis double bond creates that kink in the chain. And sometimes they'll look like this where you have that double bond and then they'll kind of go off in another direction. They can't pack as closely together and your body metabolizes those differently. So again, we'll talk a lot more about um, about fatty acids when we get to chapter 15, but I wanted to talk about this now just to put, uh, put it in the context of this hydrogenation reaction we just kind of learned about in terms of one of the addition reactions of the alkenes.